got all kinds of help. Granny and Pupper getting in on the action. Love it. Smile. <laughs> okay, so we're up on the wall. We're stacking. Um, it's going pretty good. So, there's the row that we're doing. Coming on around. Now, as we mentioned, this guy right here is my office wall, right? So this is actually stacked and it gets cut, I don't know, somewhere about right here at the angle that the roof pitch is, which is one half to 12 or one half an inch for every foot. So that will be cut at an angle and then it will go over there at the same angle. Um, I think this is like 18 feet. So there will be nine inches of rise on that side to this side. Well, in between there, then this, this part of the house steps up again and is a uh, taller roof line. Um, so to get from this wall right here over to that wall right there, we have to put in a pony wall that is, uh, we're calling it the flying pony wall because it's gonna be a pony wall, but it's gonna be up in the air. This one will actually have a load bearing wall that is the back wall of my office directly underneath it. So it can sit on top of that. That one over there actually just hangs from both ends. Um, and we have double LVLs underneath that side to support it. But I wanted solid concrete for this to anchor to. I did not want it to come back here and anchor into styrofoam and then concrete. So what we're doing is I just cut the nubs off at the end of this and running an open block all the way to the end so we're not putting a corner on here because we don't need to go that way. So the, the concrete, when it fills, will fill up and we will strap this with plywood all the way across here. And then this, when we take off the plywood after the concrete is placed and um, cured, then this will be a concrete wall right here that we can anchor our flying pony wall to with Tapcons. So instead of a corner here, we're just running a straight all the way to the end. And then that's our common seam. So I'm running it back to that and then cutting it to length. So, yep, that's what we're doing. We'll see if it works. Okay, so we just talked about that wall is just over finish height. We'll have to cut it a little bit and then cut it at an angle going downhill. Not exactly sure what we need on this wall yet, so we're probably gonna wait to stack it uh, until we understand if we can use, we have four inch spacers. They just don't have any of the plastic ties in the middle of them. They're just four inches of, of uh, styrofoam with the nubs on it. So they tie into this, but they have no inside to outside um, structure. So we'd have to have some way to clamp those together over the top with like strapping or something. So, but if it saves us from cutting a block that we're gonna be below the bottom tie anyway. So if we cut, if we cut, if we set a full block on there that has the ties, but then we cut down here because that's where the line needs to be, we wouldn't have any structure either. So um, the four inch deals make a lot of sense to be able to use those. Um, technically they're supposed to kind of go in the middle of blocks, but that's not how it's gonna work out for us. Um, what else? Okay, so we are embedding our joists down inside the concrete. So we're gonna take, hand me a little sliver. Okay, so imagine that this was cut in the exact shape of a um, eye joist, right? It's not, but assume that it was. This is gonna go down inside, inside of here like that, and we're gonna glue and somehow strap it on, wire it on, whatever. And we'll put those every 16 inches. Then when we pour the concrete, this will all be concrete around it. And then we'll have to cut this out after the concrete cures. 
and that will give us a pocket and this will be angled on the end so it's just the, the same pitch as the roof and everything this uh will give us a pocket that then our eye joists will be able to just slide right down into that pocket that's the goal now the problem that we need to make sure that we're not creating for ourselves is uh, we already have and we're going to be on the other end of the wall we're going to be fighting the existing rebar that's already wet set in the concrete so my goal is to like make sure that we're in every other um, deal everywhere else we're going to be above the existing verticals so we can kind of plan around it and zip tie them out of the way and it'll all be fine but where those existing verticals are um, we might be fighting it because let's assume that i need to be right here we're going to come down and be on top of that on top of that vertical so um, i'm hoping we don't need to be like right here with our 16 inches and we're doing 16 inches on center but we can't go where where the plastic ties are can you guys even see down there oh there we go <laughs> we can't go where the plastic ties are i want to go right in the middle but if i can't go right in the middle i could go either side as long as we can get around those and still be on our 16 inches so we can drop our uh, joists where they need to be so stand by for that fun bye On this side. What? Hey, careful there. That's really cool. I just want to make sure we didn't stick too far out to where we're not going to. I got that already. Wall? Yeah, interfere with the wall or any of that shit. Oh, that one needs to cut. Do you have any words for us? Do I have words? I got all kinds of words. I'm in for what's happening uh, right now. Oh. Um, terrifying. That's that's my word for the day. He's not big on heights. Dustin all is right, on That's going to be the level of the new scaffolding. Right here. Oh, shit. <laughs> terrifying. Terrifying. <laughs> now you know what Dustin's on the ground. Yeah, exactly. That's why he's down there and we're up here. All kinds of organization happening. Mm -hmm. Organization. Just making sure we have the right screws. Putting them in the right section. All the fun. Woohoo! Such a baby. Yeah.